Cody Rall here in front of the Capitol building. Today I wanted to talk about a concept of social pressure. So I'm out in front of the Capitol building, there's people walking by. I feel a certain amount of social pressure on me right now. And what we're going to talk about is how that affects the brain and the body to make you more effective in social situations. Because when you say to go, you go to a party or a social gathering and you feel yourself comparing yourself to other individuals, your brain will activate in different ways and we can use neuroscience concepts in order to make you more effective in those situations and that is what this video is on right now. So the reason why I'm in front of the Capitol building today is that some of the most powerful people in the world work here. And you can imagine if you met one of these individuals, you could become intimidated. It's something that uh, happens to all of us. When you're around other people that uh, have access to a lot of resources, know a lot of people, uh, it can be intimidating at times. So why does it feel intimidating? Why are we wired in that way as humans to feel that way around other people? Uh, I know from personal experience, when I used to live in Alaska, I lived with my parents for some time, so I was pretty much always having to go out other places to meet people. And that was a very different feeling, going and meeting people from what I have now. I actually teamed up with someone who's in my training program to get a place where we could uh, throw parties. And basically what happens is that you get all your friends that come to your place and you have a great time. Like, say for instance, last night, we had a lot of people over for Halloween. It was great, we had a great time, great food, great people, lots of laughs, and it was just an awesome time. What, what is the difference between that and what I had in the past where I was going to parties? Because I, I can tell you that it, it feels a lot different when you have all your friends that are right and it's your place and you're playing the host versus when you go to another place and uh, you are just trying to meet people but don't necessarily have the leadership role that you do if it was your own party. Now, when you look at brain scans, there's different brain activation patterns depending on where you're at, whether you're in a leadership role or if you're more of in a follow, follower role. And some really interesting research has been done. Uh, Robert Sapolsky is one of my favorite scientists. He's a neuroendocrinologist at Stanford, and he's written a couple of books on his research. Uh, he goes to Africa and studies wild baboons. And what you notice from his research is that they took blood samples from baboons and depending on where they were in their tribe, they had different levels of stress hormones within their bodies. Now typically, an animal that is a leader will have less stress hormones in its body than those that are following. The concept that people theorize is true is that the, peop the, the baboon that has a leadership role has more control over its life. It's got more access to resources. What it says goes, and those that are following have less control over their lifestyle. In psychiatry and psychology, they, they call this learned helplessness, and this is one of the most prominent signs of depression, is that people that feel like their lives are out of control and don't have any control over, over their lives develop what they call learned helplessness, and you can see biochemical changes in the body that lead to depression, anxiety, and all these physical manifestations of what can become mental illness. Now going back to the baboons, so the leaders had less stress hormones within their bodies, right? These wild baboons in Africa. Now what's different between wild baboons in Africa and people in modern day society is they use different means in order to gain social status. So wild baboons are very aggressive creatures. I don't know if you've ever seen National Geographic videos of wild baboons, but they are vicious. They will tear each other apart and wrestle and do all kinds of crazy things, but we in civilized human society don't do that, right? Not At least not as often. Uh, so baboons use physical intimidation a lot more than, than humans. Humans are a much more uh, savvy creature. We're very subtle in what we do, and a lot of it has to do with psychological intimidation rather than physical intimidation. The distinction in leadership roles, usually with humans, is a lot more fluid because we have a lot of different social groups. So maybe in one social group, you have more of a leadership position than in a different social group, and it depends on the situation too, right? You might go to a party and have less of a, uh, less, 
So with humans, it's a lot less of a defined leadership role at times because we have such fluidity within our culture. And even in different situations with different social groups, you can take on different leadership roles. Maybe one week you uh, throw a party and you have a leadership role there, but then in another week you go to a friend's house where there's a gathering and you have a different, uh, more of a follower role there. And what we see in brain scans is there's actually a different activation pattern in the brain depending on what role you've taken on and how you see yourself and what kind of self-esteem that you have. So when you look at someone that is more of in a follower role, and especially if someone gets nervous around other people and it con considers themselves to be of lower social status than the other person, what you see in the brain scans is that people are very self-conscious, very self-aware. And like I said, the different areas in the brain that light up when you do experiments with brain scans, the people in experiments set up carefully to measure these things, you can see that they're very self-monitoring, that they are just focusing on themselves. And what that does is take up CPU space within their brain, which prevents them from being who they are, from being expressive and using humor to connect with people. Because if you're very self-conscious and focused on yourself, then you're not gonna be able to perform as well. I know, like right now, I'm in front of the Capitol building in Washington, D.C., and there's people walking by, and I can get distracted and become self-conscious because people will be watching what I'm doing as I'm talking on camera. And it's something that is a skill to develop that you have to avoid getting distracted and feeling self-conscious in order to do something like film a video. And it's a very similar concept when you are at a party and you're trying to interact with people. Maybe you're a guy that just wants to go meet a girl, right? So maybe a situation is you go to a, uh, so your friend's house and you're standing in the kitchen with a drink and then a beautiful girl walks in. And if you've noticed, Sometimes you can get awkward, you can get stilted, and you can actually forget information. Maybe you're telling a story and you can't even remember the, the names of the people or the, the place of the story and it comes out awkward and it's, it's not flowing. Why is that? Why do you get stilted and why do you get awkward? It has to do with that self-monitoring thing with the, the way that your brain is activating. And So we talked about with wild baboons how the stress hormones within their bodies were raised depending on where they were in the social status. Well, that happens with humans too. And you can get a very acute raise in stress hormones within your body. One example is cortisol. And what cortisol does almost instantly is it affects your memory centers. It makes you not as likely to remember things. And it also affects your coordination. So maybe if you're talking to a beautiful girl and you're holding a drink and you accidentally drop it and it shatters all over the floor, the reason why you dropped it is because your coordination is off because you have these stress hormones within your body. So that makes sense. That tell, tells us that if you are feeling less psychologically on par with someone, you have these raising stress hormones, the way that your brain is activating is going to mess you up. In contrast, someone that is in a leadership role that feels confident, that is relaxed in a situation, has a brain activation pattern that reflects that they are paying attention to other people rather than themselves. They're able to flow and they're watching other people and sort of evaluating them, right? Because if you're in a leadership role, maybe you're managing a group at work, you have to be aware of the different skill sets and the different abilities and maybe even the health of the people within your group so that you can be the most effective leader that you can be. So the brain scan patterns really show different ways of psychologically how people are operating in different roles. How can you use this to your advantage? Well, if you notice yourself getting nervous in social, in social situations, it's because psychologically, it's, it's a sign that psychologically you feel that you are not on the same social status as the people that you're interacting with. And what you need to do, and this is easier said than done, is realize that we are basically all just evolved apes running around on this rock that we call planet Earth, and we're in this vast universe, and we hardly even know, we, we don't know anything about what's going on. So why are you letting someone potentially have more control over your life than they actually do? Everybody puts on their pants one leg at a time in the morning, and certainly there are people that demand respect in terms of, not that you should get overly nervous in front of them, but I know if I was meeting a general or if I was meeting the president, for instance, I would act a certain way, right? I would have a certain amount of respect for that individual because of uh, how much they've been through and how much they've accomplished in life so that I respect very much what they say, I listen to what they say, and I don't do things that would make me appear unaware of their status. But it doesn't mean that you can't 
connect with people like that. It doesn't mean that if you meet a celebrity on the street that you should get nervous or stilted. You should just treat them like a real person, right? So knowing that certain situations can make you nervous and how your body responds to that and the way that your mind is operating hopefully will give you some ideas on how you can prevent that from happening in the future. That you can psychologically remind yourself that no one has power over you, that we're all people here running around on this rock and you can interact with people in ways that uh, allow you to connect with people and having that assurance within yourself will allow you to have the right brain activation pattern and have the right chemicals in your body not to become stilted, not to become awkward, and to connect with people in your everyday life. So this is Cody. We're all, thanks for uh, listening. Signing off. Bye.